Hi, good morning, Robert Medlin here. You know, I want to talk about the kingdom of God today because I think there's a lot of confusion uh, among churches, among different types of churches, about what the kingdom of God is and, and the kingdom of heaven and, and what that means. And, and it creates a lot of confusion in, in the body of Christ. And, and uh, we're different, all these different churches, different denominations that are in the body of Christ. There's, there's basic fundamental things that we all believe. All of us believe these things that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he was resurrected from the dead. And uh, we all uh, uh, ag agree with that. And then um, that uh, once we get beyond that, when we start looking at, at our human flesh and what we have to do, you know, when we look at what Jesus did, it, everything's fine. When we start looking at what, have, what we have to do, then things get a little ugly. So um, and w some of the scriptures in the, in the Bible that talk about the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus, uh, Paul said that that uh, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is God's presence and His His presence in the world, His presence in your life, and and what that what that does is is it gives you righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's 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 where you feel righteous and holy, where you have great joy. You're filled with joy righteousness peace and joy and you have great peace and uh well no matter what the circumstances are that's your experience is the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god and jesus preached he said the kingdom of god is near he said believe the good news and so when they believed the good news they came to him to be healed and he told them that those believed in him would have eternal life he says you have eternal life those that believe in me have eternal life so uh so there's so we have the kingdom of god is experiencing god's presence and his benefits here on the earth and then we have eternal life which means we're saved and we're going to heaven and so um, the scriptures are really clear about it but but what happens is is uh, when, when you're when you look at that and you don't and you don't look at Jesus having finished everything then we can get confused so so basically what what the scripture is telling us that that if you believe in Jesus that he's the son of God he He's the Lord, that he was raised from the dead, died on the cross for you, shed his blood for you, he was raised from the dead. Or you're going to heaven, you have eternal life. And the scriptures treat us like like adopted children. In fact, in Ephesians, it talks about that God has given us, that we've been, we've been adopted. It's so wonderful. We've been adopted. You know, God has adopted us. And so here we are. We're, we're not like Jesus, but Jesus came and fulfilled everything that we have to do for us. He was our substitute. We get credit for everything Jesus did. We get credit for Jesus' nature. We get credit for his sinlessness. We get credit for everything Jesus did. We get credit for Jesus dying on the cross for us. So we get the credit for what Jesus has done. So uh, when we when we understand that that uh, that we're saved, and in fact, Ephesians says that you have been raised together with Christ and already seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In God's mind, you're already seated with Jesus. And, and and Paul said in, in Colossians, he said, you've been raised with Christ and said, uh, you're seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. He said, you died and you, your life is now hidden with God, with Christ in God. And, and when uh, Christ who is your life appears, you're going to appear with him in glory. Jesus is our life now. So the wonderful thing is that we have eternal life now that we're going to heaven. So what about these scriptures that says if you don't, if you do these things, you know, commit sexual immorality and and get drunk and all you're a drunkard and you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God what that means is it's just like you would talk to your child and you would tell your child look you know in our family we we have we're really blessed you're you have food on the table uh, we conduct ourselves in an orderly way nobody's hurting anyone uh, but out there in the world you're going to get you're going to get hurt and you can get hurt if you engage in sexual immorality if you engage in drunkenness and get high on drugs your life is going to be a total disaster you're just going to be in the devil's camp and the devil will just eat you up and so uh, those that 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 live like that 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 are that are just uh living just letting the devil just control them they're not going to experience the kingdom of god they're not going to experience righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit their life is going to be a disaster until they get turned around, which Jesus is always working with us to turn around. He wants us to have a good life, but it doesn't mean that you're not saved. 
um, a person who's who's engaged in that the devil has just tricked them into into submitting to him into submitting to his desire so that so that you end up not being fruitful you they can't do anything for the lord because you're in such a mess and so the devil wants to tie your hands and handicap you and keep you from being effective so that's what those scriptures mean about you won't experience the kingdom of god if you do those things you're not going to experience righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit you you're going to you're going to be a disaster and you're going to you're going to harm other people too in your family uh in the church and and uh that's why in there's certain in, in the church if somebody's running around doing that stuff to people in the church then it says kick them out of there you know expel them you know you can't have somebody running around uh, in the church committing sexual immorality and trying to seduce everybody in the church you can't have that it, they may believe in jesus but they're just so demonized as far as is full of lust and that that they you know you, you can't just permit them to just waltz around and, and harm people in the church so get get those people out <laughs> get them out until they can straighten out and it's even with a child if you have a child that's so rebellious and so disobedient that he won't come under the authority of the parents and he's harming the other brothers and sisters you can't do anything with him that child is going to is not going to be able to to reside in that family until he gets his unless he until he gets himself together and so uh, older children you may have to just let them go uh, you, they're still you still love them you hate that they that their life is a disaster but you can't have them coming in and disrupting the life of the family and harming the people in the family so you just have to say go you know go you know jesus loves you you know uh you sh you're going to get hurt if you do that your life is going to be a disaster you're going to you're going to hurt other people you're going to get hurt you're going to spend spend maybe time in jail maybe you're going to get taken out early you know, Jesus loves you. He paid for you, but but you can't do that and be and 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 enjoy the benefit of 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 being our family. We love you. And so, what happens when somebody is 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 uh, is is doing those kind of things? It, it alienates them from from uh, from the Lord anyway, because they're 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 wanting to look at everybody else and blame them. <laughs> they're wanting to. To look at everybody else and say, "Well, your your problems is worse than mine." They're not looking at the blood of Jesus, and so what happens is, if we get our eyes off of Jesus, then then we start looking at the flesh and and, and all these things that that uh, will cause us harm, and and we start as Christians when we start reading the scriptures. If you get your eyes off of Jesus and what He's done for us on the cross, that we have eternal. All the scriptures, abundant scriptures, declare. That you're saved by believing in Jesus, uh, that you have eternal life by believing in Jesus, you're going to heaven. You're you're already seated there. Abundance of scriptures tell us that we're already seated in heaven. And so, what happens with Christians start looking at the flesh? Either they look at themselves and get prideful about, well, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm better than these guys over here. Or they look at themselves and say, well, I'm not as good as those people over there. Anytime you look at yourself, then you've you're you're not in or you're not in the kingdom of God. You're 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 getting away from Jesus. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. We we'll keep our eyes on Jesus. He paid for me. He paid for you. He paid for our sins. We're we're righteous and holy and blameless according to the Word of God. We're going to heaven. We're already seated there as far as God's concerned. That's good news. That's good news. And that's what that's what the church needs to be preaching. And that's what that's what we all need to be preaching, is the good news. Jesus went around preaching good news. So that's our. Uh, that's our job is to preach the good news about Jesus. Let people know how wonderful he's done, what great things he's done for us. So don't let those scriptures uh, condemn you, but let them restrain you. Because if you do the things that those scriptures talk about, then you're not going to be blessed. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God here on earth. You're not going to experience righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You're not going to experience the goodness that Jesus has prepared for you in this life the things that he's prepared for you in this life if you get out there and you're engaged in all this stuff that that's the scriptures tell us not to be engaged in you're you're going to make a mess out of your life and you're going you're going to wonder you, you know how did you you know what happened to me <laughs> you know you got beat up by the devil and so the lord doesn't want you getting beat up by the devil he wants you to be driving out demons we're not supposed to be submitting to demons we're supposed to be driving out demons resisting the devil and he will flee don't submit to the devil resist the devil and he will flee 
And so that's God's plan for us. So uh, in different churches, you'll hear uh, these scriptures twisted and turned around and they'll make people feel like they're not saved and going to heaven. You know, by the time somebody gets through, a teacher or a pastor gets through using these scriptures uh, on, on, the, on the people, you know, that they'll, they'll feel like they're just worthless because they're looking at themselves. They're not looking at Jesus. And so when we look at Jesus, it's what looking at Jesus that transforms us into his image. It's looking at Jesus that causes us to reflect him, to reflect his glory. We're just a reflection of him when we keep our eyes on him. So that's the secret of living a successful Christian life or fruitful Christian life, of experiencing the kingdom of God on earth, his righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, is to is to just glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Resist the devil and resist those temptations. Resist those sensual appetites. Resist those things. Stand against them. Don't yield to them. They're going to get you in trouble. They're going to get you zapped if you yield to them. So the Lord doesn't want you to get zapped. He wants you to have a good life. And you're going to, ex- you know, you, we're all fall short of the glory of God. That's what the scriptures tell us. That that Jesus paid for us. We all fall short of the glory of God. Jesus was the only one that met God's standard. You're not going to meet God's standard. So, so, glorying in Jesus, worshiping him, falling down and worshiping him, raising your hands and praising him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you saved me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you, Lord, that you shed your blood for my sins. Thank you, Lord, that in your sight, I am righteous and holy and blameless. Thank you, Lord, that that's the way that you see me, that I'm righteous, holiness, and holy, and blameless because you paid for me. You paid for my sins. And that's that will transform you. And just rejoice and thank you that I have eternal life. I'm going to spend eternity in heaven with you. And I know there's people watching this video that, that the devil's been tormenting them, making them feel like they're not going to go to heaven because of different things that are going on in their life or things that went on in their life in the past. You know, the devil wants to make you feel like you're not going to go to heaven. But just tell the devil to shut up. Jesus paid for me on the cross. Jesus shed his blood for me. I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. I'm saved and I'm going to heaven. My sins have been paid for. And I'm righteous and holy and blameless in his sight. And he's transforming me to be more and more like him. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to be, he's going to transform me completely. And so all this stuff in me that wants to tempted to yield to you is going to be gone. I'll be just like Jesus when I get to heaven. And so that'll help you understand the scripture. So don't let somebody come along and preach something that's going to get you feeling beaten down, uh, feeling like you're not going to go to heaven. Uh, but you should turn away and not do stuff like that because you're, going to, you're not going to experience the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, so if, we, if the message is preached correctly, we're seated in heaven with Jesus. We're saved and we're going to heaven. Watch the devil, you know, resist him. Don't don't yield and don't get into that kind of stuff over there. Don't do that stuff. And uh, that'll keep you that'll keep you in experiencing the kingdom of God, experiencing the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven with righteousness, peace and joy, because your righteousness is Jesus righteousness himself. Your righteousness is Jesus himself. Your life is Jesus himself. When Christ who is your life appears, you're going to, Christ who is your life right now, Jesus is your life right now. You're getting credit for everything Jesus did. When Christ who is your life right now appears, you're going to appear with him in glory too. I know this is going to bless you and and, um, and to help you kind of get through those those scriptures that want to pull you down when really they're just meant to, to, to warn you, to keep you safe, to keep you from getting over there in the devil's realm and getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, if you believe in Jesus that he's the son of God that he died on the cross for your sins you're going to heaven your, your sins are paid for you're bought and paid for multitudes of scripture tell, tell you that you have eternal life right now and, and you're saved and you're going to heaven that's, that's the most important thing in life and the more you keep focused on that the more you want to be like Jesus the closer you get to him the more you want to be like Jesus but keep your eyes open you know don't get trapped into stuff you know, because the devil want to trap you. Don't get trapped into stuff. And uh, just stay close to Jesus. Well, God bless you and have an awesome day.